After watching this video, you'll understand the basics of architectural 3D modeling in Blender. You will learn the best practices of creating clean 3D geometry without any extra add-ons, planning your 3D models ahead and organizing the project for more optimal work. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which is available for free on my channel. The videos are slow paced for all beginners to be able to follow them. You can find a complete playlist with all the videos linked in the video description below. And if you want to access all of the project files and support what I do, I share more info on that at the end of the video. Anyway, my name is Lech and welcome to my interior visualization course in Blender. Hi everyone, in this video we will finally start creating our 3D scene and the first objects we are gonna create are the walls. But before we do that, I would suggest organizing our scene just a little bit better. So the drawings, we can put them into a separate layer or a collection. And to do that, just right click here, select new, and by double clicking, we can rename the collection. So let's call it drawings. Now I can expand this collection and move my empty objects here. So now when we are working and there is too much happening in the 3D viewport, we can very quickly disable the entire drawing layout or make it visible again. I will also, uh, I decide to keep the uh, stairs we have so uh, for now. So let's just create another collection and call it, let's say random, sorry. And let's move this object here as well. And we can hide it just for now. So with this little setup ready, um, let's begin creating the walls. As with most of the 3D models, I start by creating a cube and moving it to the corner here. I will now enter the edit mode, select one of the faces and switch to the wireframe. So I move this face up here so it matches the wall and now I press Ctrl R to add a new loop cut here. I will now select this face here, but I can barely see anything because of this section uh, drawing. So again, switch to the face mode, select a face and start extruding it in this direction. So I include the window opening in my extrusion. I don't know if it's a right word, so forgive me. And now I keep going until this area here. As you can see, I'm switching to a perspective view in order to select a face because sometimes for some reason, Blender 2.80 automatically switches to the edge selection mode. So when I think I have a face selected, I'm actually having just an edge and I'm only extruding an edge. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're creating your own models. Um, I'm now gonna duplicate this selected face here and move it along the Y axis here, which is also barely visible. And that's because I didn't change the opacity. So let's do it right now. Okay, so it's better now. I move this face here and extrude it this direction. And again, I select this face. I will just move it here. Press E to extrude again. I will also extrude this face just to mark this restroom area. And I will extrude one more time until I reach the end here. Let's now move back to this area. I'm just gonna select, select those vertices, move them like this. 
until I reach this area. And again, I'm going to include the window opening and I'm going to extrude one more time. So as you can see, I left those corner points untouched, which I will fix now. So I select both corners and with the gizmo here, I will just zoom into this point and press G and now X. So I know both corners moved uh, the same distance. So they should be now aligned uh, perfectly. Well, with that being said, we have a foundation for our walls and we will have to enable the section view again in order to know what's happening. So this is where things are becoming a little bit tricky just for a moment, but we have to kind of decide uh, how are we gonna create the geometry from, from now on. So as you can see, I've moved the wall a little bit, a little bit up and looking at this section, uh, we can see the kind of a ground floor is lifted up above the ground by let's say uh, by 85 centimeters you can see here so we need to think uh, where will be the bottom edge of our wall and I would suggest moving it up like this um, normally I would suggest having this bottom line somewhere in the middle of the f of the uh, floor slab um, but just for the sake of this tutorial let's Let's move it upwards so the bottom line of the of the wall uh, is on the same level as the upper face of the floor slab. So from here, I'm going to enter the edit mode again, select the top vertices and move them up until I reach another uh, upper surface of the another floor slab. Uh, from here, I'm going to extrude and I'm gonna keep going till I reach the very end of the building. Um, let me just see, well, there's something unexpected happening here, but we can fix this. And that's probably because some I, I must have missed those corner points. Um, we can fix this very easily, to be honest. So let's just select all those vertices and press S, Z and zero. So now all the points were scaled to the same level and we can move them down again like this. With that being done, let's now extrude one more time downwards until I reach the cellar, uh, cellar level, cellar floor level. Let's say, let's say it like this. Um, yes, so this is the base geometry of our walls. We have those additional edge loops here and I will explain a little bit further why did I decided to do it this way. But now let's just keep going and I think we can now move to adding the uh, floor slabs just to see how the building looks uh, with them because for now this is this is the thing when creating uh, a 3D model from the architectural drawings. It's not like a step-by-step -step process where everything is clear and you perfectly know what you're doing because oftentimes uh, there are details in the drawings you only kind of see after adding an, an additional elements to, to your building. So I think with the walls set up, let's now move to the floor slabs and see how they look and see if we have to adjust anything within this element we just created. To create the floor slabs, we can actually use the edge loops created when working on the wall object. So I'm going to press Alt and Shift keys and left click to select them. Now I'm going to Shift D to duplicate, going to hit Escape. Now I'm pressing the P to separate the selection. So when I exit the edit mode, you can see there is this little line here. I'm gonna hide the walls and you can see our 
slab layout is here. I'm gonna press Shift H to hide everything, so I have a better view on this on this object. Now I'm gonna enter the edit mode and switch to the vertices, and I'm basically gonna delete most of them. So with selecting these three, I'm gonna merge them to the last. I'm gonna delete this one, this one, um, this one, and this one. So with the, my mouse cursor hovering it over, over those edges, I will just press the L key to select everything linked and now delete them. Um, yeah, so we still have to get rid of those few vertices. I'll just select all of them and merge to the last one. This one I will merge here. And these two I will connect. So this way we have a, a face, but it has a layout of the floor slab. Let's hide everything and just see if it matches. Yes, it does. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to unhide everything. You can see I'm hiding and unhiding a lot. Um, honestly, I don't know if this is the most elegant way of working in Blender, um, but I'm, to be honest, I'm just used to it. I'm used to doing stuff this way. I don't know if it, if it fits your workflow. So if not, sorry for that. But for me, I think that's the fastest way to do it. Anyway, I'm just selecting the top floor and extruding it downwards with my uh, building section visible. So I know how thick should this floor slab be. Um, yeah, let's leave it like this and see how it looks with the walls. So you can see we have this overlapping faces here but let's let's just leave them like this because the camera will be most likely placed somewhere here so we are not gonna even see that um, if it's annoying you you can simply select this element now select one of those faces and just move them very slightly into any direction so now it's fixed yeah let's just leave it like this so with one of the floor slabs created, I will now duplicate it and move it to the other floors. Um, it's not going to be probably a very precise thing that I'm doing, but when you're modeling from the technical drawings, it's very often um, you have to redo things over time. So for example, the stairs we've created Obviously, we have to apply a UV, UV mapping to them, then the shader and everything. But f at this stage, they also give us a feel of the scene and a feel of the scale. And they also help us uh, kind of navigating around the scene. So let's just keep those elements uh, present and continue working. As you can see, this middle floor slab here I aligned it uh, quite precisely but the one here I will just leave it as it is because we will probably we won't probably visualize anything on the top floor uh, we will be focusing on this one at most I think um, and again the seller we will just leave it as it is so I will very roughly duplicate this slab again and move it here so you can see we have four slabs. Uh, this one is separated uh, as an independent object because if we're gonna place our camera here, uh, we will be adding uh, concrete or any other shader to this element. These will be probably just uh, standard diffuse white or some plaster shader. So I'm just keeping them on a separate layer uh, as a separate objects. Let's now unhide and see what do we have here. So obviously you can see we are still missing a lot of details. Uh, we need to cut the holes here in the slabs. So the staircase looks 
well usable and realistic um, we were we will most likely need to adjust this area here because from why from what I remember there is a cut here in the floor slab but those details will be covered in the next video and yes so for now I really hope that was useful what I just showed you um, as you can see modeling from the uh, floor plans from the technical drawings is not that hard if you just approach it the right way if this is the best way I don't know but what I can say this is a method I'm personally using for many many years since 2009 I would say and I did multiple projects using this method so I would say it's it's bulletproof because once you align the drawings within the 3d viewport once you align the the basic geometry to those drawings then you're basically having a, a great layout for creating a, a very nice visualizations and your geometry as you can see is very clean so we have this vi very very uh, simplistic meshes but that speeds up a lot of on the, I mean that speed speeds up many things like UV mapping um, modifying those meshes so let's say cutting out the window openings cutting out holes and yeah I would say that's the way to go um, that's the way I've learned in one of the best companies out there and that's the way I was using for creating my uh, to deliver the work to my clients so um, yeah if you want to follow this way I'm happy and enough of talking in this video let's let's see you in the next clip and uh, where I'll be showing you how to cut those holes and how to start detailing this 3d scene see ya Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support what I do and access all of the project files that I've created together with the course, together with the interior scenes, together with hundreds of Blender exclusive 3D models, check out the Choco for store and learn more about our subscription plans. This is truly the best money can get you if you want to get better at Blender. Thanks again for watching and I see you in another video.